Hello, welcome back to Pillars of Eternity. Uh, last time we went through Heritage Hill and uncovered its disaster. Headed to the tower to stop it. We lost. Durant's died along the way, which is very unfortunate. But, we gotta move on. <laughs> and discover more about what we need to do with the visions we have. Oh, right, I still need to tell someone about this plot. Lord Raymond will be someone decent. Speed things up here. The district is safe again. Alright. I do want to go to First Fires to talk to Lord Remont. I need to somehow also bring up my prestige so I can. Well, actually, is there a way I can check how much people like me? I'm sure there is, and I just don't remember. <laughs> we see. Um. Oh, here it is, reputation. Faintly good. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I figured a lot would probably be the party the most. Because he's the first one you get. But yeah, I'm fairly liked in Defiance Bay. Eh, this is not where I want to be. This is where I want to be. Welcome. Okay, I need more reputation. Good day, stranger. What's, what's, what's the problem? <laughs> I can't put your fate the bit. Slow down. What does that mean? Pools filled with sunbursts of color. Okay. Uncertain mission with no clear outcome. Yeah. <laughs> Where does this take me? 
I have no idea. Okay. This is one of those areas where I'm just at a loss so on where to go. Adair, you have said you fought in the Saints' War, but for which side? The one that blew up my god. I didn't mean anything by it. I imagine a man with a head made of fire and light would be very convincing. Funny thing about Dear Woodens. With all that fire and light, they just treated him like another authority figure. <laughs> I like their response. I don't want to blow up my god. <laughs> um, fuck. Where am I going? Where am I even? What am I even doing? Let's just go to yeah. Let's go to the village. Why not? And I can come back and talk to. No. Hmm. I'm already here. I might as well. What's my inventory look like? Garbage. <laughs> you must gather your party before venturing oh, forth. Oh, shut up. Recomary. Yes. Ooh. As you near the apparition, you are overcome suddenly by a powerful anxiety that sits like a stone in your stomach. The feeling is not quite real. It's a recollection of an emotion rather than the emotion itself. It wrenches your insights nevertheless. The apparition's brows tense and a look of concern plain across his face. The other missionaries say you have been neglectful of your duties. My mind has been elsewhere. Oh? And what troubles you? In your stomach demons and you feel for a moment, so you're about to be sick. Your mouth is going dry. The man folds his fingers together and presses them to his mouth thoughtful. You have been an apt student, and your convictions have inspired those around you. May I ask what has changed to make you feel this way? Uh, let's see. I've done something unforgivable, why not? Apparition exhales slowly and its lips press together, a sympathetic red port in its eyes. It places its hand on your shoulder. I see. And you would cast yourself out, is that it? What I've done, no god would have had me now. <laughs> if you believe that, then I have failed you as a teacher. There are many gods so that all people are looked after, no matter who they are or what they've done. The only ones who need fear anything are those who abandon their gods, thinking all is lost. But for those who beg help and forgiveness, the gods always provide. Only for the desert. I will tell you the truth. There may be some among the gods who would see you punished, but after punishment comes absolution, redemption. Whatever stain there is upon your soul, the gods can wash it clean. But you must dedicate yourself to them in return. That is what makes one deserving. Will you return the faith they put in you? The knot in your stomach seems to loosen all at once, and the anxiety is replaced with something else entirely. Something warm and soothing. And it's something you know you can never repay. As the vision fades, you start to become cognizant of the many 
a looks aimed in your direction. Your last response echoes in your mind. Hello. Oh. Yes, I am the one who lifted the curse, my ladies. Who's to remain anonymous? Trust me, bring you this pistol. Belong to dear friend of hers. Thank you. St. Graham Spark. So many goddamn wires. There we go. Alright, what am I doing here? <laughs> Is she on the second floor? I don't know. Just a thick stack of parchment with spindly, wrinkled fingers. Their flesh stretched thin near to near translucent with extreme age. A gossamer veil over pale blue veins. Ink splotches and candle burns dot and stripe her hands like a quilt pattern after some great indescribable truth. She does not look up from her reading. So, the messenger conveyed my summons. A miracle that would make the reincarnation of Aethys look like a child's cantrip, surely. It doesn't draw the most inspired minds, messaging. They failed me so many times of late, I nearly sent a cipher after you instead. <laughs> so this is the Watcher who took over Cad Noir. Oh, don't look so surprised. It isn't an attractive expression. I wouldn't be where I am for long if I let details like that escape me. The spies were here, don't miss much. <laughs> and this fiasco in the sanitarium that you seem to have gotten yourself into the middle of. What in blazes possessed you to stir that nest of trouble? I'm investigating a strange group. Strange does not begin to describe them. The practices of the Leaden Key defy all reason. True. You're not the only one with an interest in their recent activities. I've lost four ciphers this year alone trying to get someone inside their ranks. As it is, we only have our suspicions about who is in the group and what they intend. Which I suppose means we have much in common with them. I asked you here because I wanted to know what your interest was in all of this. I thought perhaps we might help each other. Why are you looking for the leaden key? When their members cause my soul to awaken. She closes her eyes and the lids flicker. Then her face goes still and her mouth parts, little more than a sliver, and her hand briefly drops open, spilling some of her parchment on the ground. The pages wafting around her legs like the leaves of dying tree. Her fleshy eyelids peel back and her gaze is immediately upon you. The gods are cruel, I'm afraid. The man you seek is Theos Ix Arcanon. Grand Master of the Leaden Key. One of the most elusive and dangerous men Aeora has ever known. How do you know I seek Theos? Because you have seen his face, and that makes it a simple matter for me to see it. You even happened to catch him in a ceremonial garb, it seems. Must have been a special occasion. What can you tell me? More than most, though very few would know so much as his name. And there is no way of knowing how much of what I've read is true. The Leaden Key dates back more than 2,000 years. If rumors are to be believed, Theos was the one who created it. Hmm. What scraps of evidence exist? <coughs> Suggests that he has died many times, only to be reborn each time, exactly the same man. Awakened during adolescence, 
with all the knowledge and experience of all his lifetimes. The plots he orchestrates sometimes take hundreds of years to bear fruit. Needless to say, this is not the natural order of things. But he is said to be one of Woodica's favored, and that old bat was never one to let rules get in the way of favoritism. That may also explain another supposed gift of his. His body is no boundary to his soul, and he is known to take possession of others, if their souls are weak enough. Often it is for elaborate deceptions, but sometimes he simply forces them to kill themselves. He is not known for his generous supply of pity. He is also not one to show himself in any but their most critical matters. If he has directly involved himself in whatever the group plots now, it may be your only chance to find him. And once you do find him, if you can find him, I would not hold my hopes too high if I were you. He is a driven, single-minded man. He will not have the slightest concern for your problems. How do you know so much about him? The same way I come by all my knowledge. Exhaustive research, spying, bribery, perhaps some less savory measures. Whatever the knowledge demands, I pay in full. There is nothing of greater value. Unfortunately, with Theos, there is also nothing more scarce. He has covered his tracks far too well. His manipulations of the course of history are lost to time now, though I believe they were many. What else is there a note about him? Precious little, I'm afraid. You may know much of it already. No one member knows the identity of more than a handful of other members. They are kept in the dark of missions they are not involved in, or sometimes of those they are involved in. They exist to hide secrets they themselves don't know. If you can imagine how gullible someone must be for that to appeal. Despite that, they are very good at what they do, owing much to their founder, who will take matters into his own hands when necessary. And he does not fail. What do you want from me? Keep me informed. The leaden key has been busy lately, and that is distressing news. I can only guess as to what they intend. You seem to have a knack for turning the stones they've crawled beneath. Keep turning them. Dunreed Row will not stop you. Whatever it is they're up to, figuring it out will be of great use to both of us. In your case, it will surely point you to Theos. In return, I will share our knowledge with you as we learn it and provide you with what assistance I can. Right. If you find your trail has run cold, come to me with whatever you have. There is much I may be able to do for you. Do well, let's hear yes, it. Yes, I do. Found Theos in Brackenberry Sanitarium, impersonating a patient. Turning damage to public opinion, you know, animancy. Forgive me, it is unlike Theos to leave witnesses. He must be furious. <laughs> he did not aid you as you'd hoped, I take it? Well, take heart. With any luck, when he has finished his business, he will surely come and find you again, if only to kill you while you sleep. This news of yours makes sense, of course. To dabble in animancy is to puzzle over the secrets of the gods. This would not be the Leaden Key's first action against it. But if this is connected to their other activities, we may be in for something on a much larger scale. If we can learn more about their goals and methods, perhaps we can get the palace behind us. With Avar's support, we may be able to put a stop to this. Being with the tower and Heritage Hill contains ancient machine that can control the flow of souls. The Leaden Key activated it. This is troubling. 
That civilization seems to have known more about the mechanics of souls than anyone since. The Leaden Key was born in that period. It may be that Theos has full knowledge of their technology. The applications of this machine you speak of. I don't want to think about it. That isn't enough to take to the Duke, but we're close. Avar Wolfgrin is a cautious man. He will want to know everything possible before being moved to action. That is all. And they will. Try your best not to die out there. All right. stairs there they are <laughs> but uh yeah I think I'm gonna go to somewhere <laughs> oh how's my keep how's my how's how's Ken Nua doing let me check that let me check the stronghold nothing new no events. Uh, you're still under construction for another day. Okay. How are you still ready, Watcher? Really? <laughs> you are literally 54 experience points away from rumbling. Okay. Hmm. Let's get out of here and head to Deerwood Village. Which I have to go through the plains first because it's on the other side. I'm just going directly east. Keep going. I have currently cleared this area, so I'm not surprised. <laughs> Can I not go there from here? I'll have to go through here. Hey, you level up. Let's give you survival. <laughs> um. Let's do Vicious Companion. Oh, 
Okay. Out with you! I already told you what... But... I'm sorry. I thought you were one of those ruffians. These times we live in. How may I help you? What happened to you? I never saw their faces. Strange hooded men asking about those ruins. Cleoban Rilag. Most of the brigands who come through here asking about the ruins are looking for a few ancient trinkets. But these people knew the name. And they were in a hurry. They wanted to know where Cleoban Rilag was. I tried to keep it from them, but I couldn't hold out forever. I don't know what they were up to, but it can't be good. That doesn't sound like a winning. That does sound like a winning key, yeah. Uh. Most universal of all gosh, over six portals and cycles of all kinds. Okay. The Glan Fallen tribe that guards the ruins will kill anyone who trespasses there. And they'll retaliate against us too, if history is any indication. We've had too many fortune seekers stir up trouble of late. If I'm to tell you, I'll need to know your reason for wanting to go. Dangerous plot is unfolding. I've got to stop it. If that's the case, then we may already have trouble headed our way. I'll have to take you at your word. You'll find Cleoban Relog here. Whatever trouble you find there, please end it quietly and try to stay out of the ruins. No promises. Maybe all there is to this village. Hold on. Yeah, there's more over here. <laughs> I completely forgot there was a bridge here. Just double checking. 16 hours. Alright. Good day, stranger. Uh, I guess I come up from the craft deer for where to take it. I was still a young elven noble on the road. I haven't seen anyone like that. Lord, how run in, in anyway? I'm grateful for your assistance. Okay. Fragrant. <laughs> Hello. But I am stuck for you. Why are you stuck limited? Can't use them as suppliers. I'm stuck with whatever I can scratch up in the woods. A Drake's nest. Try to get good day sure. to you. Okay. Then we 
middle-aged peasant woman is dressed in a brown leather cloth draped down to her knees. Her hands are working at separating string colorless vegetables in a pile before her, stripping the heads off the long viper stems with a part paring knife. She scratches her stems one by one, placing the heads of the vegetables into a small crater-like basket in front of you. She has a great choice approach. You're not sure if she even knows you're there. Eh? Yeah. One doesn't respond, she keeps tripping the heads before me. She may be deaf, there's no indication she heard you. At first glance, she seems nothing more than a middle aged woman. Are remarkable, maybe less stern than most. She seems more focused on the weaving in her lap than her surroundings. Yet, you suddenly notice she's not stripping the vegetables before her any longer. She's weaving, and the vegetable pots are now missing. She still pays you no mind. Her brown locks torn and snagged from lack of washing, like many in the townsfolk you've seen. There's a strange blur to her. Even the motions of her hands seem to be playing with the thread that lack color. And you're shaped lacks interest. Maybe that she is half minded or deaf, but something feels wrong. As you watch, her knitting takes on an odd cadence, and you have a terrible suspicion that something lurks beneath what your eyes are showing. Uh, almost impossible to link your hands as you polish your hair. Her hair becomes long and black, splitting up the threads of black and silver right under her hands, forming a soul cradle with the threads. Braiding a net in front of you, each finger long and sharp like a series of knitting needles, almost hypnotic. The silver and black strands of her hair weave together, with silver predominating as a highlight, the black shadowing it. Suddenly you are calm. You're on a plateau, almost the height of a tower several stories high. The plateau is like a table lying beneath the clear sky, and beneath the plateau, surrounding it in all directions, a forest, hazy with mist. Although whether it is actual mist or distance, or recollection. Resting in the curve of a natural arch above you is a great copper bell, half hanging the size of a man. Hanging out of tension. As if, you're, as if looking down on you and even unfolding before you. Lato has soaked in the sun and the rock beneath you is rough and warm. The sky forms a cradle around you. You feel different, not disembodied, but you feel your body, your physical contours have changed along with your surroundings. And you hear a soft series of chimes, like wind chimes. At the sound, the scene gains color and texture, as if the sound is beckoning you gently forth, filling your senses and thoughts like mist roiling softly into a sealed chamber, and the chime coaxes you deeper into the memory. You're certain it is a memory, a warm one. You're on the stone in the plateau, your knees on the warm texture of the ground, silver, white, shimmering like Adra. The plateau is formed of it, glistening in the sun. You can feel the heat on your skin, your wrists, and your hands. Your hands are in motion. Weaving. Not thread, but gathering, tenderly moving through, moving along the first movements of Bereth's wheel. Your hands are wet, your hands are upon the flesh of a newborn child. You can feel the crowning of a tiny head turning in your grip, its head slick, wet from the wool. The hands you are wearing, inhabiting, have done this many times in your practice and confidence. You feel the distant pains in your own head as the head emerges and a stream of fluid from the womb helping a newborn slide forth and a woman's labored breathing crying out. As your hands move, you hear the sound of chimes clear cutting through the haze of memory. You cannot see where they are coming from, but they are close. They are meant as a comfort, of that you are certain. And coaxed by your hand, every movement causing the chimes to sound again, almost eagerly, the child comes forth, and as it does, your hands are in motion, weaving, weaving, moving along the length of a soft, wet rope. No, the umbilical cord from the legs of the naked woman before you. You're holding a small child, still wet from the womb before you. The child cries out, its cry full of life, full of soul, the ringing of chimes echoing in its thoughts, filling it with its welcome. The soul is blurred at the edges, as if you are viewing a soul from within a soul. But it is there, it is alive. The woman before you is weeping, and at her first cry, her hands reach out for it. You surrender the child to her, something you have done many times before, and as your hand moves, the chimes echo the movement. You 
as the chimes are hanging from cords on your wrists. However, once they echo in the memory, they are now echoing in the child's mind as well. The chimes are intended to welcome the child, to be its first gentle greeting into the world, a soothing sound guided by the tender motions of your wrists. You are helping to weave its thoughts as perceptions and the experience. The experience. The woman laughs with a racket joy, laughing from a parched throat. Her emotions seem soothed, but the physical demands of labor have left her exhausted. But the child is here. The child is safe. All throughout the plateau is peaceful, calm, distant, flattening out as the memory persists. Slowly pull back. Yeah. With effort, the scene bleeds of color, and your mind becomes your own again. There is no pull, no anchor, yet the sound of chimes remains. As they existed in the memory, they sound here as well. You are hanging from woven braids on the wrist of the woman before you. Even as your head is spinning from the touch of her mind, the sound chimes on her wrist is sharp and clear, as if coaxing you back to the real world. The woman still sits before you, but she is nothing like what you first saw. She's wearing black, shredded garments that drape over her form like streamers. Her hair is streaks of black and run through with silver. Her age is almost impossible to tell. She simply feels old, like a crumbled watchtower. As she lifts her head to face you, you see her, her hair is draped across the front of her face like a veil. What you first saw of her was a mental glamour of some sort, unconscious, and you realize that you, what you see is not what the world sees and you perhaps prefer to see her true self. Still, you don't sense a threat in the realization. If anything, you feel a sense of relief from the figure. You can hear her thoughts and she is glad to at least be seen. At last be seen. Who are you? I am seen, but the eyes of others do not remember. You were the first to see me as I am, the call stripped aside. There is a light touch in your mind, a caress and her left hand mirrors the motions of the touch, reaching up to the air between you. You hear the chime on her wrist sound softly. Her hand moves as a pantomiming, resting on your cheek at a distance, and she speaks softly and slowly. Your memories. The cadence of wheels on a caravan track. Fever. Questions by running water. Violence in a night's campfire. Arrows in the dark. And fleeing, falling rock and cracking stone, and a storm. The storm. The storm that brushed you. Did its screaming wake you from your mind's cradle? Your memory of it is painful. Its cry is difficult to ignore. It's like a child. Many children crying out. A kid to be awake, yes. Her hand withdraws shyly, the chimes sounding softly once again. The woman stands uncertainly, as if she has been sitting for some time, or is too weak to bear her own height. You notice her cheekbones are tight, her face gaunt, yet while her stance is weak, she seems determined to stand before you. You are able to see me. It is almost a question. You suddenly realize she doesn't seem to know what you saw. When you looked at her, the image on the plateau, yet the image was so clear, so sharp, you surprised she didn't feel you there. To see me is a rare gift. A watcher's gift. I mean to do it with a living person, except you. So many <laughs> questions, thoughts, whirling like storm winds. That storm still roars through you, deep beneath your thoughts, yet muted and secret like an underground river i cannot tell if it is carving new channels or eroding what keeps your true strength buried the fact that you could hear it at all survive it is something few have ever done your power will grow stronger with each soul you touch as it allowed you to reach out to mine There is a silence, and although it seems to last but for but a heartbeat, in your thoughts it stretches up between the two of you, like a pull between your minds. You blink, take a breath, and then you realize she wants to ask you a question, 
you can't form the wards as if assembling them is painful, or there's simply not enough pieces. Do you wish to travel with me? You feel a wave of fear, gusting with the strength of relief. Although, oddly, her expression does not change. The fear dissipates, and you feel strength and certainty as the plateau from her memory lies beneath you, and a calm sky looks down upon you. I would walk with you, see through your eyes, Watcher, and feel your footfalls echoed in my thoughts. Perhaps together we can make sense of what is broken within and without. Hey, I got Grieving Mother as a companion now. She is a... Cypher. Okay. Uh, you're gonna wanna stay far away from everyone, so I'm gonna give you a pistol. <laughs> you have to place your dagger your crossbow with it. Um, uh, okay. Have a cloak. And... I'm gonna keep you in light armor, because... Sure, have a hat. Nope, the hat makes your balls, never mind. <laughs> Oh boy. I wish there was just a, a quick move all button, but no, there's not. I have to click and drag, and it's so dumb. Mundane stuff I can keep in there. There we go. Actually, it's a... Oh, that's the wrong character. Hold on. <laughs> there we go. I need to give you a, a shield. It's not a fucking door. <laughs> but I haven't come across one yet, so... Oh yeah, that's right. Durant's died. So I have his staff. Nope, I need change person. There we go. Okay. A lot of this is gonna get sold. But yeah. Um Where's the tavern? <laughs> Pretty sure this is it. someone just to talk to for another side quest. I just want to find her. Surely even you can understand that. We're decent folk, my lord. Perhaps you should leave and check the wilds. Okay. How do you do? What was exchange with the nomad man about? Uh, if a granny or decent they mind their own business. You just take your nose and go talk to him. Okay. I just want the room. Let's go Dragon Slayer. Is this still under construction? Seven hours. That's fine. Let's go talk to him. Man wears a their style of robes. Simple but elegant. His fine leather shoes look like they have been made from padding around indoors, yet they're caked with mud. He yanks a lock of hair to wind around his silk gloved finger. 
His fine features are etched with anxiety. My child is out there. Do they not understand? My lord, we're doing everything we can. Unfortunately, these villagers... Beasts take them all. I don't care how you do it, but find her. Your child is missing, I take it. Yes, Lady Alice, my daughter. I've asked around, but nobody in this mud hole has any concerns beyond their swine. They turn my men away like beggars and seem downright pleased to be of no use. But you, you're not one of my soldiers. And you look like you're used to getting your hands dirty, if you don't mind my saying so. <laughs> If you find her, so I won't be somewhere she can come back and all would be well to make sure that she is safe. Elise, of course. Describe her. Her husband resembles her mother to me. She has over hair and delicate, well bred features. 28 or 29. Okay. Turn her disappearance. Stopped in Deerford only a few days on our fourth evening here. Just make a plan to continue our journey. Feeling unwell with the bed. She had vanished in the night. Okay. Why did you come to Deerfoot? It's merely a stop along the way to end this rest. However, she took ill before short before arrival, so she needed to allow her to sleep to get her coming. <laughs> Why is in this rest? Reach an age where it is prudent for her to marry. Given this legacy business, I can't let her fertile years slip by. Okay. There are better loads around the coast, wouldn't it be easier to follow them? If I thought that, I wouldn't be slugging through the forest, would I? Main roads are clogged with people fleeing one way or another, trying to escape way as little as they see. I'm here to recommend a pass without incident. Where's the rest of your family? There's a few other close friends, sister and her husband. His aunt and uncle Cora have been visiting a dare these past months. Her siblings, she has none. Okay. You're gonna make your daughter. Okay. So daughter decided to disappear and run away. And now we're tasked to find her. But I'm gonna do that next episode. I'm <laughs> it's a it's a short one, but Okay. Short one, but you know, there's a lot of information being done. But uh if you like it, leave a like on the press that like button. Give it a nice little gentle push. Don't break it or anything, please. Uh, if you want to see more, subscribe. Got something to say? Say it with your chest down in the comments. But, uh, yeah. Stay safe. Take care of yourselves. And until next time.